My father had a, a serious drink problem. He was a violent man. Um, we experienced a very traumatic youth, and so there was a lot of brokenness and a lot of fracture in my life. When my heart is torn asunder And my world just falls apart Lord, you put me back together And lift me up to where you are Tom Malone served as the local executive chairman for an outreach Will Graham held in Scotland. Tom's our guest on this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. I'm Jim Kirkland. And I'm Phil Fleischman. Will Graham's grandfather, Billy Graham, also held outreaches in Scotland. And you're going to hear an excerpt from one of those outreaches a little later in this episode. You don't have to come down one of those beautiful aisles here in Scotland and say yes to Christ. You can say yes to him now and know the peace and the joy and the rest that only Christ can give to the human soul. Anytime you want to know more about saying yes to Christ, just head over to our website. It's findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. GPS. God. People. Stories. Tom Malone lives on the northeastern coast of Scotland in the fishing city of Peterhead. He's lived there for the last 40 years or so, but Tom spent much of his childhood in London. When I was in London, um, I, my, my parents, my, my father was a publican, so I was raised in that environment. And I was serving in pubs at a very early age. And when I left school, I continued to work in pubs and street markets. And uh, I lived in various places, but mostly London. And uh, I had a, 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 quite a serious drink problem because I was emotionally messed up. And... Um, in living in London at the age of about 21, I met my wife Maggie, who comes from Peterhead. She'd come from Peterhead to, to, to London to do a bank telling course. And we fell in love, and after a couple of years, we, we decided to get married. And the plan was to stay in London. That plan changed, though, when Maggie became pregnant with their first child. She got homesick, so they moved to Peterhead, where Tom got a job in a car factory, a job he absolutely Hated. It was a great place to work with great people and it was a very good job, but I was always in, in, in working with people in, in public situations, in pubs and hotels and street markets. So being in a factory behind a lathe was, was very difficult for me. Um, but the first year we were up here and I was working in the factory, uh, we were living with my in-laws for, for uh, about a year. And during that time, my sister-in-law, who was also living at home and who's about 18 years old or maybe younger, uh, she got saved, and she came home one day and said she was saved. And I thought to myself, what on earth does that mean? What, what, what is saved from what? Saved by whom? Saved to what? Not only did Tom not understand what his sister-in-law meant about being saved, he didn't understand the changes he saw in her life either. There was a sense of peace and joy, and, and just there was an aura around her that I didn't understand, but it was, it was absolutely palpable. And over, the, over weeks and months, I used to tease her, coax her, want to argue with her, usually when I'd been drinking, to ask her about this, this thing that had happened to her, and she would talk to me about Jesus, and I just didn't understand it. And uh, one of the most radical things I've ever heard in my life was she said to me one night in the kitchen, talking, she said she just loved Jesus, and it completely impacted my heart. It, just, it was the most ridiculous, profound thing I'd ever heard in my life. And that was the beginning of, of, of my preparation of discovering Jesus for myself. We're looking for love For something to feel We want something true Something that's real Now, enter an insurance salesman named Bobby. He was helping Tom and Maggie buy their first house. After maybe a second visit, he started also to tell me about Jesus. And the thing that impacted me about this fellow, he was completely different, a different background, different kind of personality to Heather. But he had the same aura, the same peace, the same calmness, the same assurance. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was unmistakable. But he was an evangelist and he talked. He could talk. Boy, that guy could talk. And he talked to me one Saturday afternoon for about three hours about Jesus. And I didn't understand a word of what he was saying. But there was this attraction and this presence around him and um, 
he, this was on a Saturday and I was due to go out that night and he asked me to go to church the following day and I, I said no and he kept just saying just come to church and eventually after about three hours I agreed to go to church just to get rid of him. Mm -hmm. That night I went out to a, there was a wedding celebration and I got absolutely drunk, which was normal for me. The next morning, Tom's wife reminded him that he promised Bobby he'd go to church with him. Tom resisted but finally agreed to keep his word and he was ready when Bobby rang their doorbell. And I very reluctantly and sheepishly, with a massive hangover, went with him in his car to a, a local church near Peterhead and all the way to the the church at about 15 minute drive he talked about Jesus and played Jesus music and I thought my goodness what have I got myself into it wasn't the last time that morning that Tom would ask himself that question and uh, we got to the the car park of the church and I got out of the, the car and there was a chap walking across the, the car park with a, a bible the size of a suitcase and a tartan jacket and he shouted over and waved praise the Lord brother and I thought my goodness gracious me what what is this but there was something there was something very real and something very beautiful about it we thirst for your presence send down your rain here in this moment oh Tom and his wife followed the man in the tartan plaid jacket into the small church. And there was maybe about two dozen people, and the, the fellow that was walking across the car park turned out to be the pastor and the preacher, and he preached on heaven and hell. The man said to the congregation, now you have a choice, you, this is your choice, you choose which way do you want to go. Uh, choose Jesus, go to heaven, reject Jesus and go to hell. It was, it was one of those just simple, profound gospel messages. And if you want to accept Jesus, put your hand up, and my hand shot up. It just shot up in the air. And my wife tried to pull it down and said, what are you doing? You know, you, you, you don't know what you're doing. You don't want religion. And he then said, if you want to accept Jesus, stand up. And I stood up. Had he said, do cartwheels, I'd have done them. Had he said, do backflip, it didn't matter to me. What I was conscious of was that inside of me, was, I was completely changed on the spot instantly. I just felt this awesome presence and this just sense of absolute wonder and amazement and I just knew God I just knew God was absolutely present and real Spirit of God fall upon this place Thin every heart into a burning flame We long for you call upon your name Spirit of God When they got home, Tom's wife asked him, what on earth has happened to you? I said, sweetheart, I don't know. I said, but for the first time in my life, I feel whole. Mm. And went to bed that night, woke up in the morning to go to this factory, which I hated. And uh, I woke up and opened my eyes and I just waited for the hangover blues to kick in because normally I'd have been drinking the night before. And the, 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 the Monday morning blues and the general depression and misery of life and I opened my eyes and I lay there waiting for the feelings to kick in and it didn't. I just felt strangely, awesomely wonderful. Tom's wife didn't have the same experience he did that Sunday, but she would. She gave her life to Christ about a year later. In the meantime, though, she was watching the changes that Tom was feeling in those first few days after he accepted Christ as his Savior. just felt this profound peace. It's really difficult to describe because so many things are Christian cliches, peace, joy, love. I didn't understand any of that language. I just felt awesomely wonderful. Then someone gave Tom a Bible. A small King James Bible. And I began to read that. I could not put it down. I did not understand a single word of it, but it just enthused me. About three days later, I read about the woman with the issue of blood who just touched the hem of Jesus' garment and was instantly made whole. And upon reading that, I had a revelation that this was the same Jesus that had touched me, that touched her. I just fell to the ground and uh, began to worship. And it's good honest to say I've been worshiping ever since, I'm just absolutely awestruck by the power of God. Come, Jesus, come, come like the wind, fill up the 
The power of God. That power will indeed completely change your life. It'll give you hope and peace and purpose. Why does God offer to do that? Because he loves you more than you can begin to imagine. We'd love to tell you more. Visit our website, please. It's findpeacewithgod.net. That's findpeacewithgod.net. Find peace with God. Tom found that. And he also found something else, something that had been all around him for years. He'll tell you what that was in just a minute. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a podcast production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Among the Puritans which came to America between 1620 and 1640, one fifth of them were of Scottish Presbyterian persuasion. Billy Graham. What was the faith that these rugged Scots with a burr in their accent gave to America? Out of the rubble of a ritual which had accumulated upon the cold altars of a frigid church, these men revived three great eternal truths. The sovereignty of God, the sinfulness of man, and the saving grace of Christ. In these three points of divine revelation, they were all agreed. To them, Christianity was not cold, formal intellectualism, but a warm, dynamic life to be lived. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ left heaven 2,000 years ago and came to this earth and died on a cross to save us from sin. The only way to heaven is by the cross of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. At this moment, you can come to know Christ. You don't have to come down one of those beautiful aisles here in Scotland and say yes to Christ. You can say yes to him now and know the peace and the joy and the rest that only Christ can give to the human soul. That peace, joy, and rest is what chaplains from the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team are sharing with people in different parts of the U.S. Chaplains are in Northern California, where deadly wildfires have been burning. They've been in parts of Texas and Florida that were hit by hurricanes. And recently, they were in Las Vegas, following the deadly mass shooting there. Yeah, at each of these deployments, the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team chaplains minister to people who are coming to terms with some kind of loss— You can learn more about these deployments at BillyGrahamRadio.org, and then just click on What We Do at the top of the page. Again, that's BillyGrahamRadio.org. Some of the people the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team chaplains minister to are unaware of Jesus Christ and Christians until they meet the chaplains. Well, Tom Malone, our guest on this episode of GPS, was pretty much unaware of Christians until he gave his own heart to Jesus. Over the next few weeks, I discovered that the world was full of people called Christians. I hadn't even known there was such a thing. And so that was another revelation to me, that so many people were, 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 were Christians and born-again Christians. And I found myself in this community that I didn't know existed before. Um, so that was a long time ago. That was 41 years ago. God has done a lot of work in Tom's life over that time. He went from essentially not knowing about Jesus until he was 23 to helping Will Graham tell thousands of people about Jesus in his 60s. We're grateful for Tom's work with Will and for his willingness to share his story here on GPS. We also want to thank Phil Wickham for the use of some of his music in this episode. And we want to thank you for listening. This is GPS, God People Stories. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I'm Jim Kirkland. GPS is an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. Hey.